was April, uh, March the 10th, 1997. How it started, we were working for a local contractor in Gisborne and um, the supervisor we were, that was running us, he um, uh, said a position was coming up to um, start our own crew. Are you interested? And we showed interest, obviously, but we had no money. And um, we um, sat down, run the numbers. We're both, me and my dad, both scared. And no, nah, they're saying us, we can't do it. And within a couple of months, we decided, no, nah, we'll have a go. We've got some money together through our mortgages. And I think we got 38,000. We went through two forestry crashes and practically lost a lot. And went back up and lost a lot again. I didn't even know what an accountant was. And so we had an accountant set up and then we, um, he said, oh, we need to have a talk with you after 12 months. Went in there and I th we thought that was the end of career contract and we were going, we are under. And he said, you've um, profited 1.2 million bucks in the first year. And um, so, yeah, that was us, we were away. The goal right from day dot with me and my dad was to eventually own our own, own forest one day and be able to have the road in, the ground base, the hauling, the metling, the everything sewn up and um, we got sick and tired of being fed metal that was cheap and nasty, failed and made our roading look bad. So about 2013, no, yeah, 2014, uh, Mars started with us and he came from the quarries over in Australia and um, he sort of sparked the fire there to go crushing and get our own our metal going for ourselves and um, that's how the crushing got started. Around about uh, 2016, towards the end of 2016, forestry was doing quite well here. There was a lot of demand for um, raiding aggregate, um, but there wasn't a lot of supply. And like what you said, it ended up being um, the supplier at that time just started giving anything and everything that forestry companies had to buy because there wasn't anything available. Um, but even still, um, they couldn't keep up with the supply. And an opportunity came up with um, Pikarangi Forest Farms, who's been our primary principal contract, uh, principal company that we work for, um, have their own quarry but they couldn't find a contractor to go in there and actually um, produce a magnet. So I um, had a bit of a conversation with Rick, or several conversations, and I said to him, why don't we do it? And fortunately at, the, at that time as well, we had uh, employees start who had as um, a great quarry manager ticket, so the staffs were all aligned, and then we got in the hold with, uh, I think it was, Billy and, and Bird down at Equip 2 and we were looking to lease a, a jaw crusher, mobile jaw crusher. <laughs> and then you, we got the jaw crusher up. Actually, I think we flew up to Final A, um, both Billy and I, and met Billy up there, when and looked at the B4 um, up there at the quarry. Um, yeah, happy, we're happy with what we saw. Came back, Ricky went to the Goffs agent here and got us um, a brand new 950 year mule loader and we repurposed one of our 30 ton forestry machines, hired the jaw and the rest is history. But we had a huge, huge help from um, Billy and Bird onto what to put in there and we weren't having much luck with the product so we put uh, uh, the, the K4 in there to get rid of the junk out of it and came up with the best product they'd ever seen. Like, Ricky said for us, um, we take a lot of pride in, in, in what we do, um, and both in the logging side of it and the roading side of it. Um, we were finding that the aggregate that we were getting supplied for our roads wasn't the best quality and it didn't reflect well on, on us in the sense that people would look at that road and know the crew contracting built it and it had failed but not out of our inability to build a road, more to the fact that it was the quality of the rating aggregate. So it has complemented um, the bigger picture. And yeah. pro providing the full source of everything, logging, roading, yeah. trucks, the aggregate, the whole lot. Also part of the reasons for that is about being able to control um, from where to go um, our operation. Um, for too long we left our, part of our business was in somebody else's hands 
and um, it wasn't very comfortable. Um, yeah, crew contracting, as, as long as I've been here, has um, always been uh, based around the core values of any family, I suppose, and, and, and we try and implement that in our day-to-day -day operations. Um, it has been a little bit trying, I suppose, as we've grown from when I first started at 8 to 10 employees to now being somewhere around 60 to 70 um, in the space of um, five years or whatever it's been. Um, we still try and maintain those core values um, here, um, but there's no handbook to tell you how to run a business um, on the East Coast um, of this size and run it, develop it and, and, and maintain um, good business performance as well as uh, good business culture, I suppose. So we are grappling with a lot of that all on a day-to-day -day basis. Well, I'm going to punch this in there. I don't believe that we could have without the Keys Tracks team. Um, I, I, we never got no backup from anyone like we've had backup from Keys Track or Crop 2. Just the experience and, and the knowledge of the, of, of the product plus knowing what else is going on around the country to um, what we were trying to achieve and um, the other other part of um, it. I've had experience some four or five years ago uh, of mobile crushing in, in Australia. Um, and I wasn't familiar with the Keys Track gear. I've done a fair bit of time with the Mezzo, the T-Rex, Finlay, um, Stryker, uh, McCloskey, had done some time with those. All had obviously the good points and bad points, um, like everything. And then when we first leased the Keys Track, I think it was before, um, I wasn't, um, Surprised is, is more the word. I, 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 I was pretty confident, even just seeing it on the on the YouTube, and that, that it would be suitable for, for what we did, what we wanted to do. Um, and saying that, I think the the Keystrap key Kit does stand up pretty well against the, the rest of the market. That's a big part of why we have continued to purchase Keystrap is purely out of the the backup service that we get. With the, I don't think that they could back up as well as they have when we've got our first one all the way from Master, you know, and they have 